what a goodie. Today's video is going to be an old school Q&A style video just so we can take some time to chat, connect, and just catch up because I know it has been quite some time. So I put a question box up on Instagram and you guys submitted some questions. So yeah, we are just going to get started. But before we jump into the questions, I just wanted to thank you guys sincerely for all of the messages, the kind words on the recent loss of our sweet little piglet. So if you guys didn't know, we recently lost Piglet and it was pretty tragic. He actually was attacked by three bigger dogs in our yard and I know that when I start telling you guys this, it might just seem dramatic and I never thought that I would be the person that would just be so tore up about a dog. But you know, he was in our life for a very long time and I think it was more of the manner that he went and just having to see him suffer and in pain. It was just a traumatic experience, as dramatic as that might sound to some people. Um, but we let him out, it was a Sunday morning. Um, you know, we were getting ready for church and I was in my office because I've been trying to upload on Sunday. So I was in my office and I looked out the window and I was like, there's like a three random dogs in the yard. And I didn't know at the time that Colton had let Piglet out. Now, when I originally posted um, about this happening, a lot of people, like, they couldn't make sense of it. They were like, what, you just randomly let your dog out? Like, you don't walk him? So I know to a lot of people, it doesn't make sense. But you would really have to, you would have to see our house. Like, we have a lot of land. We have over five acres, very large yard, and we don't live in like the typical subdivision. So we have neighbors, but they are not close neighbors. So we're almost kind of secluded. So um, it's very common to just let your dog out. They know the yard. So he would just go out in the morning and do his business. You know, we wouldn't have to worry about him. And we've been in this house for five years and never had anything like this happen. So um, this was not expected at all. And the dogs that I seen that morning that attacked him, I had never seen before. And upon further research, they don't belong to anybody in our neighborhood. So I don't know if somebody just randomly dropped them off and there were strays. But yeah, I saw these three random dogs and I told Uriah like, tell um, daddy that there's three random dogs out in the yard. And so he was like, oh crap, like I just let Piglet out. Um, let me go see what's going on. So once he went out, we realized what had happened and we got to him and Y'all, it was just so sad because he was like down in the ditch area, like by our mailbox. And not to go into too much detail, but he he was just ripped open. His back legs were broken. Um, he had just been like bit on, on this hip area. And his tongue was like hanging out of his mouth and you could just tell he was in so much stress. But when he saw us, you guys like he tried to get up and like move it, it, it was just it, it was so I just I don't know I don't even know I don't have the words but just seeing him have just a little bit of like faith of like oh I'm gonna make it I'm gonna be okay because I feel safe now because my family is here something about that was just so it was, like I said, I don't have the words and I don't want to talk about it too much because it, it is very emotional for me. But um, when we first found him, I thought that he was already dead. I thought he had already passed away, but he hadn't passed away. So we got him wrapped up in towels and we got him in the car and we took him to the emergency vet, which was over an hour away. And Colton put his flashers on and sped the whole way. And just as we pulled up, literally he was in Colton's arms and he just like took his last breath. So it has really been an adjustment. And I think the entire situation was unfortunate and Losing him that way was very traumatic for us. 
Um, of course, he was getting old, so we knew that, you know, we maybe only had maybe three to five more years with him. And I'm not saying it wouldn't have been hard if I would have just, you know, woke up and, you know, he had gone in his sleep the night before. Yes, that would have also been sad, but for him to go this way, I never in a million years would have imagined that. So, yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys and just go into a little more detail about what happened. So yeah, Piglet is no longer with us, so you guys won't randomly see him running around in the Clean With Me videos, but um, he lived a very long and happy life. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to thank you guys again for all the kind words, but we are gonna go ahead and get started with these questions that you guys submitted. Okay, so the first question we have is, how do you keep your faith strong and keep a great relationship with God? So for me personally, I try not to overcomplicate the relationship that I have with God. Um, I would say our relationship is very easy breezy. I literally talk to God every single day. I know to some people that might sound a little cuckoo. You basically could say I'm praying because prayer is communication with God. So prayer doesn't always have to be like this fancy, you know, you know, it just doesn't have to be all the things that we always hear or that we often hear when people pray. It can be normal conversation. And that is what I like to have with God. Um, literally all day every day I'm talking to God you know just just coming to him with whatever it is that I need and I am constantly trying to work on that relationship pour into the relationship do things to make it better just as far as Bible study that's one thing that I really struggle with so I've really been trying to take the time to really study and learn more about the word and um, yeah it's it's always something that um, you know, I'm nurturing. I'm always trying to build a better relationship. But for me, I just try not to overcomplicate it. Don't make it too difficult. And I know a lot of the times people think when you do have that relationship with God, that it means that you won't have trials and you won't have ups and downs, but you are gonna still have those things come up in life. But you find joy in knowing that God is there every step of the way. He's going to lead you. He is going to guide you. So I don't want to get preaching. I don't want to get to preaching because I could, but I just try not to overcomplicate the relationship. And I think that makes it a little bit easier for me, but that personal relationship is going to be different and how you go about it is going to ultimately be up to you. So the next question is, what did you study in college? So I went to college for paralegal studies and um, I can honestly say that I think if I was still doing that, that I would probably be very bored. <laughs> um, so I only had one job in that actual career field and I worked for an attorney, but I didn't really get to do like paralegal things. I was pretty much just like a secretary, I guess you could say, but I did have my degree in um, criminal justice and paralegal studies. So yeah, I haven't really got to do a lot in that field, but if I could go back, I probably would go a whole different direction because I'm not real sure why I decided to do that. Um, I think I kind of wanted to be a lawyer, but I wasn't really sure so I was like okay let me do this first let me figure out like criminal justice and all of this and then maybe if I want to be an attorney I can you know further that later but um yeah I don't, I don't think I would go in that direction if I were to you know enroll in college today okay so the next question is I've noticed that you're blogging more at some point will this be your main focus so if you guys did not know I do have a blog now it's life with Nitra B and I have really been nurturing it I really have been enjoying just having different topics and things like that for the blog so I would not say that it will be my main focus but it is a lot easier to get content out on the blog than like an video because um, these videos can be like a whole production but whenever I'm doing a blog post it's just a lot easier um, it just 
doesn't have to be as complex as like a video but it's just another way for me to get content out to you guys and um it's just a lot easier for me um so yeah i don't think it'll ever be like my main focus but it's definitely something that i wanted to have and i think if you are a creator it is important to have your own website and newsletter and things like that because at the end of the day we don't own instagram tiktok youtube any of that so i think just actually having your own website is so important so that was something that I really wanted to get into and just be another way to get some type of content out to you guys because um, from 2020 from 2020 until now I know I have been lacking with the videos so the blog posts were just something for me to be able to just push out to you guys but it wasn't as of a production and with having two kids I definitely needed another way to get content out so yeah that's why I started the blog again it's life with nature B I have a link in the description box if you guys want to check it out also make sure that you subscribe to my newsletter um, because I have a lot of exclusive things that happen in the newsletter I put out an exclusive video every month we do exclusive giveaways so yeah there's a lot of fun over there so yeah definitely be be sure to check out the blog and the newsletter. How do you keep your marriage so vibrant? You two seem so in love. Thank you. We are very much in love. I think one reason we're able to kind of keep the spark in our relationship is by continuing to date each other. And I know how hard that is, especially when you have kids. Um, so when we transitioned from one to two kids, it was definitely a little bit more difficult to try to figure out those days date nights and um, how we wanted to keep them up but we um, try to do a date night at least once a week and I know if you don't have um, if you don't have child care help that that can be so difficult so I am very thankful that we have my mother-in-law my mom my grandma coach and sister we have those um, people available to watch the boys whenever we want to go out on a date night and it's also free child care so that makes a difference um, because I know it can be expensive to have a babysitter that you have to pay so one way we're able to do that is just by making time for us and sometimes we have date nights at home every week we don't go out but we do try to make sure that you know if we can't go out that we're putting the boys to bed early and you know we're just having a little dinner or just sitting down and you know just catching up with one another because life gets so hectic it gets so busy especially when you have kids it seems like you don't even really have time to pour into the marriage but you have to make the time for it because if you don't it will just seem like you're just going through the motions and um, eventually your kids will be grown and you'll be like okay I don't even know this person because you know we've been pouring into the kids and we forgot to pour into the marriage and now you, you have to kind of start over so I I don't I didn't want that to be us once our kids um, grew up so we just really try to take the time to pour into us and also we met each other when we were so young we actually met when we were 14 years old in high school and we started dating when we were 17 years old so um, I think for us just having that friendship first that turned into a relationship it really helped um, so yeah thanks for that question so the next one says just bought a house should I take my time with the decor or do everything all at once so I would say definitely take your time y'all we have been in this house for five years five years and we are still renovating we are still doing things around this house because we could not afford to do everything at once when you're doing remodels or you're trying to update you're trying to buy furniture y'all that stuff is expensive it takes a lot of money and one thing we knew for sure is that we did not want to go into debt trying to update or renovate buy new furniture so we had to take our time like put money back for different things so you know financially I say take your time and also even if you do have the finances to do everything at once I think it's important to take your time and live in the space first to really figure out the space and try to figure out what's going to work in the space I know when we first moved into this house I bought all of our furniture from the previous house and I was just putting it where I thought it should go and 
hardly any of it worked for this space. And I know whenever I would show the house with the furniture from our previous home in this home, a lot of people would be like, Mm -mm, like that don't look good like I don't like that there I don't know where you're trying to go with this but I just had to use what we had because I didn't have the money to just go out and buy all new furniture at once and I was really glad that I took my time because I was able to really just learn the space and figure out how I wanted it and I just think that makes all the difference when you really just live in a space first and just kind of figure out exactly how you want it to be don't be in a rush to buy everything because your style might change what you decide you want to put in a certain place might change for example when I first moved in this house for some reason I don't know why but for some reason I thought that I wanted a huge round table for the dining room I don't know why but I wanted a very large round table with like 12 chairs around it and then after like a year I had already picked out the table that I was gonna purchase and everything and then after a year I was just kind of like no like I don't even know why I want this so I would definitely say take your time and you know just figure out exactly what you want and how you want it to be was going from one to two kids a hard adjustment so for us personally it was a lot harder to go from one to two than to go from zero to one um so i wouldn't say that it was like you know just absolute chaos but i definitely had to really plan out things a little bit more um once we welcomed ezra to the world it was um definitely a transition and i was really really gentle with myself I really gave myself a lot of grace I took a lot of time off from YouTube um, as you guys will see um, once Ezra was born I wasn't doing a lot of posting I really wanted to um, just focus on being a mom I wanted to really nurture both relationships the relationship with Ezra and also with Uriah so I really focused on family just to make sure that the transition was a lot smoother but it, it was definitely harder to go from one to two than from zero to one. I think with zero to one, you're so excited and you're just really preparing. I know I was like overly prepared with um, with Uriah and we were really prepared with Ezra as well, but it's just the excitement of the first, not saying that Ezra was less exciting, but you know, just the initial excitement, never having a kid before. Um, so yeah, the transition was, it was definitely um, an adjustment I will say I had to really just plan out things a little bit more but I think what made it easier for, for us was the age gap so they're four years apart which at first I was just kind of like eh, I don't know if I want my kids to be that far apart but it has really been um, it's been good I don't feel like they're too far apart but they're not like really close where I'm like pulling my hair out um, because they're two under two or anything like that because I know that that can be difficult as well but um yeah I like the age group I like the age gap now at first I was just like oh like that's just so far but um, Uriah you know he was a little bit more independent he was able to help like if I needed a diaper I say, hey, you right away, grab me a diaper, and he was potty trained. So, um, I think what made the transition easier for us was that age gap. But, but yeah, going to two kids, it, it's definitely a transition, and I, and I don't think we're gonna be adding three to the mix, y'all, because yeah it, it, it's a lot and I want to make sure that I can really give both of my kids you know just a great value of life and I think maybe if we threw another one in the mix we all we all might be a hot mess so the next question we have is how do you manage two kids a husband working from home and still find time for you so I think the way I'm able to do this is by planning I like to make sure that I'm planning out everything I am a planner girly now we haven't gotten to where we're planning out sexy time we still like a little bit of spontaneousness there but yeah other than that I pretty much plan out everything and that way I'm able to see where I do have time where I don't have time and of course some weeks are busier than others um, so yeah it it just makes a difference to be able to plan out every single thing if it's not in my calendar then 
it's likely not getting done. I put every single thing in my calendar so I know exactly what's going on for the week and each day I have a to-do list and I know that might sound a little like extra for people but it really helps. Also make sure you are asking for help. If there's something on your plate that you can have somebody else to do then get somebody else to do it because you will wear yourself out trying to do it everything i know sometimes us as moms we you know we want to do all the things but if you can't do everything without you know being overworked and stressed out it is okay to have someone to help you so yeah make sure that you're asking for help i have a virtual assistant now that helps with a lot of tasks within the business so that helps take some things off of my plate so yeah if there is someone that you can just have do something get something off of your plate then definitely do that because that will definitely help so the next one says i remember you taking the boys to disney what do you think is a good age to bring them so we went to disney last year and uriah was four about to turn five and we had so much fun i was a little bit nervous because ezra was only about four or five months when we took him so i didn't know how that was gonna be but it was a lot easier than i expected we put him in the little baby carrier he was able to ride all of the rides we had our stroller he slept a lot of the time and it was just it was basically a breeze with him um so yeah if you're a new parent and you want to go to disney and you know you have a new baby i would not think you were crazy for taking like a four or five month old because it was it was not as difficult as I thought. Get you one of those carriers and you know get your stroller because Ezra he was literally just chill, y'all. But he he turned up now like all the way turned up. But for them first couple of months, like from like the first month to eight months, y'all, he was like the chillest baby ever. He had me fooled because everybody was telling me like the second baby is like the no limit soldier. Like, you know, they are the wild child. But Ezra, he was so chill. I was like, oh, I don't know what everybody's talking about. Like my second baby is like chill. Like he is just relaxed. He, you know, he just does all the things. He sleeps through the night, which both my boys were really great sleepers. So I am blessed with that. They both start sleeping through the night really early. Don't really have any tips. I just think that they just like sleep. Um, but yeah, y'all, Ezra, he totally had me, um, he had me fooled. Yeah, he was like, I'm gonna show you because I'm about to turn up. But anyways, back to the main question. Um, I think if you want to take them so that they can really remember that like the four to five age would be a great um, age because Uriah remembers everything about that trip and he still says like, mommy, mommy, like when can we go back to Disney? So I think like four to five would be a great, um, a great age for like their first trip. So the next question we have is about the Peloton. It says, do you think your Peloton bike was worth the hype slash investment? Um, so I've had my Peloton bike for a very long time. Colton actually got it for me for Christmas in I think 2017 and I had been wanting that bike for such a long time so when I got it for Christmas I was super hype about it and I really do think that it is worth the investment but of course only if you are going to use it you have to use it like a lot of people say oh I don't like the Peloton bike okay so if you know you're not gonna like cycling then you know obviously it's not gonna be worth it to you or for you but what I would recommend if you are considering it is to go in stores get on the bike get a feel for it it is going to kind of take some time to get used to the seat I actually had to buy like a gel seat to go on top of mine because it was so uncomfortable it was so uncomfortable that I would hardly ever ride sitting down so once I bought that gel seat I was able to um, you know sit down and ride but um, yeah, I love the Peloton bike. It has definitely been worth it for me. Like I said, I've had it for a very long time. It still works. I haven't had any problems out of it. Um, and if you just want an easy workout, 
you want to be able to burn a lot of calories in a short amount of time then i definitely would recommend it that's the thing that i like about the peloton bike is that you don't have to think about your workout um so a lot of the times i would want to work out but i was like okay i don't really know what to do or i don't want to do you know like a circuit or anything like that so you can just jump on the bike and you know just get to going and you have gotten you a good little workout in and then also the peloton app it has so many great workouts on there so um if you just want to do a workout you can get on that app they have like strength um strength exercises yoga all of those things but the actual bike i love um i did get colton a row machine for christmas this year and i have been using it as well and i like it too so i think it really just depends but um for me i have loved it and like i said i wanted that bike so you know i was really hype about it and then the next one we have is where do you shop for the boys clothes so normally i like to shop at old navy carter's h m zara just a little bit i don't do a whole lot of zara um and those are pretty much like the basic places um i will get some stuff at walmart i don't do a whole bunch of target for the boys clothes um but yeah, I would say like Carter's, H&M, Old Navy, little bit of Zara, and Walmart is pretty much like the gist of um, where we get most of their stuff. All right guys, so that is all the questions I'm going to answer for this video, but I will be answering more questions in a newsletter exclusive video. So if you wanna see that, make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter. It is free to subscribe and a newsletter goes out every single Sunday. So yeah, I'll have another Q&A video going up in the newsletter later this month. So definitely be sure to subscribe to check out that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video thank you for all of your support i really appreciate you guys and as always i will talk to you all in the next video bye